Americans with a puck. Mutala drags the puck, comes to the net, tucks it on, and he scores! Oh, what a goal! Mutala! The offseason is always mainly logistics as far as getting training camp set up and running. And I thought our training camp went rather smooth. We, we had a, a smaller camp with a lot of young players in, and, and uh, it's mainly an evaluation process as is the preseason as you send some of the young Bantams home and then start your preseason with your signed players. And, uh, for us, the preseason is an evaluation. It, it's uh, a chance to look at guys we think have potential to play in the league this year and, and uh, look at our depth players. We're pretty comfortable with you know, what our veteran players can do, so it's more of a evaluation tool and an experience opportunity for our younger players. He's adapted fairly well. Uh, his English is pretty good for, for first time over, and he's only 17, so he's a highly skilled player, a very good skater, and elusive. I think uh, as time goes on, he starts to adjust to the league and understand that he's going to have a very good season. We, you know, he's uh, always been a, a very good player on the Czech uh, U-17, U-16 national teams. And, and um, you know, I think he has the potential to be a uh, fairly high NHL draft. Christoph Baravic is uh, at the St. Louis Blues training camp. He's not signed player, but you never know what the status is of the 20-year-old uh, his situation. So we did draft two. We drafted the other one with David Homola, who's uh, played in the Ivan Lincoln Edmonton two years ago. He's a skilled defenseman, uh, also out of the Czech Republic. And, uh, you know, obviously it made sense for us to bring another one over just in case uh, Christoph turns pro. Um, you know, we're hoping that he comes back, and all indications are that he should be, but uh, you never know how those things unravel. Really, our focus is, you know, are the U.S. division, and then the focus after that is getting into the playoffs and you know at that point anything can happen certainly we feel that uh, our overages are the strength of our team with Haravik, Olsen and Warm and Mutala had a great summer training it looks like he's going to have a breakout season it was a very good pick by Colorado so um, you know we have some good uh, good uh, scoring at the up front but you, you can always like to add a couple more guys if you could or have some guys break out and you know we're looking at Connor Bouchard and Sam Jewell as uh, Pace and Borgman as possibly having breakout seasons. If they do, then, you know, that gives us pretty good depth up front. Uh, our blue line's a little bit young yet, but, uh, you know, certainly if they play a solid team game, uh, they should be successful. They all returned from last year, so they do have a year of experience, so that really helps young players having that first year under their belt. I think whoever the backup is, they'll play more than they did last year, I think. It was a situation last year where Town was 16 and, you know, we were fighting for a playoff spot. Beck was healthy and, and we rode him, probably played him a little bit too much, but it was, you know, out of necessity. Uh, this year we would expect our backup to uh, probably get into more starts. Uh, Mason Dunford's come in and had a tremendous preseason, so uh, it's a battle between Dunford and Boyko for that job and, and uh, they're both quality goalies, so uh, we're in a fortunate situation there. Yeah, I think the U.S. Division, for the first time, there isn't a clear front runner. I mean, if you look at all the teams, the U.S. Division has been so strong for so long, but <clears throat> you look at Everett, they lose some key guys. Portland's a very young team, but they skate very well, and they got some good offensive talent. Spokane still returns some talent, but lost an awful lot. Seattle like, looks like they're going to be a younger team than ourselves. So I think the U.S. Division's up for grabs. I think a lot will depend on, on some injuries and, and, and different things, and, I think as a whole, the conference will be tight, and, and uh, which two teams miss, so who knows. But uh, in the U.S. division, I, all five could make it again, which has seemed to be happening almost every year. Kelly did a great job. I mean, we lost a lot of players from our team the year before. I think nine guys turned pro and two first-rounders, Valimaki and Rasmussen. If you look at Coughlin and Kiki signing pro contracts, uh, we lost a lot of talent. He came in and established a good work ethic. I mean, it was a learning year for him because he spent his whole career in pro hockey, with either coaching or in development. So junior hockey is different. Uh, certainly, you know, you're dealing with 16 to 20 year olds for one thing. So, you know, when when the practice is over, the job doesn't end. And, and for coaches, it's an adjustment and learning the developmental curve and those types of things. But certainly, I thought our team competed very hard last year, and, and there were some things that we needed to to improve, but I think his, as any coach, his second year will be 
that much more enjoyable and knowledgeable. He'll know the league more. He'll know the players and the other teams. So preparation will be a little bit easier from that standpoint. But uh, it's always a lot of hard work, and that's something he's not afraid of. His whole career is based on that. So he brings that that attitude and that culture to our room, and I think that's a very positive thing. Every year is a fresh start for every franchise. So this time of year, everyone's excited. You get to look at your young guys and start to get them into your lineup and you're looking at some of your returning guys and you're excited about how they've improved so you know that's the great thing about junior hockey is there's so much change from year to year that uh, a fresh outlook for every team in the league and that's uh, I think it's awesome for the fans that's what makes this game so good.